So quite often you'll see I'm, I'm listening to what people want. I'm listening to people's fears and problems and I, I make it about them instantly. So it's, yeah, what you love, you will get out of the way of and you will be able to serve with. Hey guys, welcome to our Soul Fam podcast where I interview space holders from all over the world. I am your host, my name is Carolina, and I am the Connection Catalyst. I help spiritual entrepreneurs experience deeper connection with themselves, with others, and with the universe. Today on the show, we have Jordan Durbano, a conscious sales mentor and a hip hop artist. Welcome to the show, Jordan. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Caro. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, I am super glad to have you and I'm super excited to talk to you because I, I know that we have a lot to talk about and uh, yeah, it's great that we can connect even though we are on the other sides of the world because uh, you're, you're in Bali, you're getting hot, I'm getting hot here in Madeira as well yeah. and so it's uh, beautiful that we are uh, able to, to do this and um, I'm super grateful for the internet and for anyone who freaking uh, put <laughs> their brick onto making it happen because without yeah. it we wouldn't be here right now, so Absolutely. yeah, it's amazing. And so um, this podcast is mainly about like healing and, you know, the spiritual journey of people. So I would like to start there. And I know that I have a lot uh, in common with your uh, first steps of, <laughs> of your spiritual journey. Only just uh, a tad, like yeah, only a bit. <laughs> yes, yes. The first, the first few steps. Um, but yeah, I would like to... Um, you know, start from your journey of how you became conscious of yourself and aware of yourself and how did your journey begin and, and developed until now? Like, what did you change in your life and how did it affect your way of being? Because, like, I know uh, that I remember you and I met you as a completely different person. So I'd like yeah. you to talk a little bit about the shift that you've gone through thanks to the spiritual awakening and the inner work, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, I was in a cafe one day and uh, I, I had a very successful business, but I was feeling quite empty and um, I was looking for something new. I, I thought it was more success. I thought if I succeed more, increase my revenue profits, I'm going to be happier. And um, Ricky was like, yeah, dude, you got to go speak to uh, Carolina. She's, uh, she's going to, you know, it sounds like you're ready. I'm like, ready for what, man? He's like, yeah, yeah, she, she's going she's gonna to help you open up some things that may help you grow your business. Just go in and don't, don't expect much. So I, I think at the time I, I was quite in tune with my body, um, even though I hadn't gone on this journey. I was typically a guy that if it, something felt good, I'll dive in, even if I don't know what the hell it is, like I'll, I'll dive in. So it felt like, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I'm going to dive in and do this session with you and see if this can take my business to the next level. So that, that like inadvertently got me on my spiritual journey. And I remember when we had our first chat, you were talking about inner child work, trauma, being stored in the body, unfelt emotions. And a lot of it just started to really hit home. And I'm pretty sure I shared with you, I'd worked a lot on my mind and done hypnotherapy, the Martini method, all these different things, but it was very mental based. And I guess when we started acknowledging the inner child, feeling emotions that hadn't be felt, I realized, wow, like I'm limiting so much of my potential because I haven't, I haven't worked on the emotional body or the physical body. And that's when it kind of cracked open and there was all this stuff and I was like, whoa, who's Jordan? This is, <laughs> this is kind of screwed up, but, um, <laughs> it's been, it's been a beautiful journey. You know, I went from this guy that went to the office nine to five, managing a team, very serious, um, you know, only focused on money through to discovering, um, how much I love travel. You know, I've been right around the world in the last year, uh, making music. You know, I never thought I had music in me, but I've released two albums since starting, um, starting all the healing that just keeps flowing out of me. And I've come back into the same industry that I used to be in, but I'm just so much more happier and people just find their way to me, which is amazing, you know? Um, so yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's been a journey and a half, Gary. It's only been two years as well. Can you believe that? This this has all happened in two years. I know, I know. That's why inner child work and all these emotional trauma healing is so powerful because yeah. it can literally change your life 
within a few months completely like yeah. 180 degree it can change your life if you really because you are also a person uh, you know one of my favorite clients because if i give you homework you're gonna go and freaking do it you know yes and i feel like people who are committed especially like high achievers or people who are really into growth they are gonna actually take it in and do the homework and work on themselves and learn how to do this on themselves because that's also my point if i do a session with someone or multiple sessions my point is that at some point they're gonna know how to do this by themselves and then they can they don't have to uh, come to for to me right for coaching they only can come when uh, people don't maybe cannot go through something by themselves because sometimes yes. there are fears or some extreme emotions right that you need yes. some space to be held and it happened with us as well but most of the work afterwards after you like got a grasp on what is this inner child healing you were doing on yourself and yeah. that's what i think it's the most amazing about it that is that I don't want people to need me their whole life, yeah, <laughs> to be coached their whole life. Yes, I, yeah. I need them to, to actually learn how to do this on themselves and then come to me maybe for advice or maybe if they struggle with something specific uh, and then I can help, of course. But, you know, I just really want everyone to, to know it and then to spread it more, then to show it to more people and do the healing on their friends and family maybe. And then we can raise the consciousness of the whole planet like that. So really, I'm just like so passionate about it. And, and you know that. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely really do. just really want this to land. Yeah. I really want this to land for people that you don't need like a year of uh, coaching to change your life. You can come on five, 10 sessions and really learn some of the methods uh, that coaches are using on, on you and then do it and then look at where you're at and you well, you really adopted it you really started doing the the work so congratulations it. man because uh, right now you're in a beautiful spot in your life yeah and you know it, it, what you said around the 10 sessions versus like the year or two years you know it's it's very much about just having some courage to to look at things you know and it's i don't yeah. say that lightly you know courage is a very <laughs> underrated thing and the more courage you have to look at what's there and and feel it it's um you know, what, I mean, what you can create, it's, uh, it's truly incredible. Um, if someone had told me this is where I would be in, in two years' time, I would have said, you're, you're freaking kidding me, man. No way. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful that's really beautiful and i agree with courage but also i feel like it comes with experience because for me as a person who didn't like feeling negative emotions at all yeah. after doing a few sessions you kind of like get used to feeling bad and then you only see the reward of it so at the beginning yeah. maybe you're like oh this is unpleasant i need to be courageous to go into it because it's so unpleasant for me to feel it but really if you do it over and over again after like five or ten sessions you're actually like whoa i feel so good afterwards that this unpleasant feeling at the beginning is not that meaningful anymore because the meaning is in this relief that you feel after the session so i think it's also about experiencing it so many times that when you feel this relief you're like oh my god okay and then you, when you do it again, when you are about to step into the trauma, instead of focusing on, oh, it's going to be unpleasant, you're focusing on, oh, I'm going to feel so amazing afterwards. So 100%. I think that's a massive difference. You need courage at the beginning, but I think that afterwards you just need experience to, to know, oh my God, okay, I want this shit because it's yeah. going to bring me so much relief and so yeah. much change. So yeah, I think it's, a, it's a really important. And so you said that you came back, you circled back to the same um thing that you were doing right like yeah. sales for example and so what is the difference oh someone is uh, sharpened the knives <laughs> yeah in the cafe yeah yeah hopefully hopefully it's all good though <laughs> yeah it's, it's fine it's fine um yeah so what is the difference now that you look at your business like how did your consciousness shift in the approach that you have to your business in the maybe ways how you're doing things what has shifted for you as now a conscious entrepreneur? Mm, mm, yeah, it's a good question. So the first thing I'll say is um, internal scripts, internal scripts, internal stories don't have control of my decisions. So one thing I started to learn was most of the decisions I used to make came from trauma, fear of running out of cash, fear of being out on the street, you know, all these stuff yeah. that we, you know, make up when we start a business or when something happened as a kid. Um, it takes force and, and um, drive to sign clients where really it's just presence and strategy. It's, uh, there's been a lot that's changed, but if the, the main point that I want to make here is that the internal scripts don't have control of how I run my business and what I decide to do. So, 
when I say internal scripts, I say in my sales business that we either sell from the moment, what's true, what's in front of us with the client being present, coming from our heart, or we sell from an internal script, something that's happened in the past that's traumatized us, and we will mm -hmm. create a pitch, we will create a marketing thing from there that usually puts that person off, and that's where the manipulation and all the nasty things that you see in sales come from. And I found, since handling that and continually working on these internal scripts, you can see the difference. You actually say less when you sell. You hold more space for your clients. Clients start to make decisions on their own and the results that you're able to deliver for your clients are much bigger. So I, I'd say it's internal scripts and it's also elevating the amount of presence that you have. You know, I think presence, again, it's not spoken a lot about in business, but it's massive. It's massive. You, mm -hmm. you just stop. You're not proving yourself to people. You're just showing up and people are getting there going, you know, there's something about Carolina. I don't know what it is, but I want to work with her. There's something about her energy. I want to work with her. And it's that presence thing. It's that unspoken um, language that I, I believe it is. Wow, that's beautiful. I've never really uh, thought about it this way, that it's fear-based versus love-based uh, sales. Right, because yeah. like if you if it's based on your internal story, it's like oh I'm scared that I'm not gonna get this client. It's like yeah, so what if you're not gonna get this client? It's probably because you don't energetically match, so you're not gonna be mm, feeling good <laughs> working together anyway. And if you are a match, it's beyond what you say. It's actually like how you feel. It's actually who you are, what you radiate to this person, and if this person needs the energy that you have, right? Because if you spend time with someone. For example, one while coaching, then you're exchanging energy. So if this person needs your energy, then they will gravitate towards you, as you said 100%. before. So, thank you for sharing that. It's uh, certainly going to be helpful on my journey yeah, yeah. Uh, because I want to learn more, more and more sales. And so, for people who are just at the beginning of their path uh, in their business, or maybe they don't know much about sales, maybe they're more focused on marketing. What would be your maybe top three or five tips? to do it consciously, to really bring the spirit into the sales call or into business in general. Mm. Okay, unpopular opinion coming up. So most people don't like using scripts and it's because they're, they're like, I sound robotic and you know, I wanna connect. And what I found is that when you haven't healed the traumas and you haven't done the work, that is very much the case. When you're, come, when you're going through a script, you sound robotic because you're scared, you're holding yourself back. When you've done the work and you've, and you've really gotten to the core of who you are, I find a script helps you stay with the client because when you develop a script from your heart, you're basing it around the client, so it's going to serve the client. So I would say to anyone, there's two things you have to focus on in sales. You have to focus on getting out of the way so your self can come through, not your you know, your wounded self that's scared of losing money or getting rejected. Get to know who you are, your power, and then build a script that actually serves your clients and follow that script because if you don't, typically what happens is an internal script will take control of the sale and it will lead you off, off your way. And you may have the best of intentions, but you're not able to channel your most influential self to persuade the client to buying the thing that's going to help them. So I find that if we sell from a script that actually serves the clients, we make the money, they get the result in a very efficient way. We stop talking too much, we deliver what's necessary, and the service is done. So to anyone listening in sales, don't focus on getting sales techniques or strategies. Get a script that serves the client and just get out of the way. And your, your influential self following that script is the best way you can help everyone on this planet. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And I feel like a lot of people might, uh, you know, find it quite nice what you say about like serving people. Because, for example, when I met uh, Ricky, right, when we started being together and he told me that he's a marketer, I'm like, for almost the first question after that, I asked him like, so do you, do you sell to people something that they don't need? Or are you like, kind of in the meaning, like, are you pushy with your sales? Are you pushy with your marketing? Like, because for me, sales and marketing was like, 
oh, just people in the suits coming to your house and trying to sell you yeah. something that you don't need. And it's just association that people have in their minds, which is just not true because totally when I met true. Ricky, he was like, no, he's like, marketing is actually a beautiful way to let people know about what they need and then they can get what they need to yes. solve their problems, right? Yes. And when I was looking at the business in this way, I was like, wow, it's actually such a completely I, different perspective I really than want to the share, program we have. I really want to share something about the suits because this is related to the healing work. So a lot of people don't want to feel the inner narcissist. The, the part of us that wants the money, that's hungry, that, that wants to that wants to get out there and just be selfish. And one, the, the best thing I ever did was sit and feel every freaking emotion that was driving that part of me. And I, I never acted on it, but I just let it run wild. And I, I've spoken about this before with clients of mine and it's, it's hard for them, oh, I'm not a narcissist. They go, no, no, no. The narcissist is there, you've, you've got to feel it, right? And I found that that narcissist, when it matures, it wants to use that kind of more masculine, dark masculine energy to influence the person so they can get the result. So it's like we're leading them towards the result. We're using that masculine energy to, to lead them towards a result that's actually helpful. But when it's not healed, it's all about us because we feel unsafe. So the first thing I do with people when it comes to sales is go, look, you got to embrace the fact if you haven't done it yet that you want money that there's parts of you that are really manipulative, there's parts of you that feels insecure and just wants to dominate, that is okay to feel. You don't need to act on it, but bring it in. Bring it in and, and, mm -hmm. and let it mature because then the amount of presence and power you'll show up with in your sales calls, you won't even know who's selling. You won't even recognize yourself. And Caro, by a mile, like I tell you now, back in the day when I was starting out in sales, I used to use all these manipulative tactics and... I had people refund and message me and go, why did you sell me this? It doesn't work. I've been on the other side. Healing that, I just don't have the desire to do that. As soon as I can hear I can't help someone, I stop the call and I go, look, I'm sorry, but you should be looking at this business or you should be looking at this. There's just no way I can help. Um, so, you know, and, and it's funny, typically the people that are scared of sales haven't felt this in a narcissist. So if, you, if you've got that and it's like, oh, I'm a bit afraid of manipulating people, it's time to sit in some narcissism and just let that play out in the body until, it's, until it doesn't hurt you, until you can feel it all. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, this is where part work comes in, right? Yeah. Because uh, you, can, you can then discover your inner narcissist and other inner parts that are disturbing you, really. I, I really love what you said about uh, the parts parts work because this is how I would call it right and usually when we want to achieve something there is a part of us that wants this thing but there is also the part of us that doesn't want this thing because if we already handled the part of us that uh, doesn't want this thing then we would already have it there would be no resistance in totally. us right we would already achieve everything that we want because the universe would bring us in the flow uh, everything that we dream of right mm -hmm. but if we don't have it that means that there is still a part of us maybe that feels that we don't deserve it or maybe that yeah. feels that yeah i'm going to manipulate people or maybe that is afraid of success or yes. maybe afraid of failure there could be so much more yeah. in us because <laughs> there is so many parts of us so many little personalities within one person uh, almost like Siamese twins, uh, Thiel totally. is always saying that it's, you have like a set of Siamese twins um, in yourself so yeah like if you can look at them and really like uh, face to face <laughs> in a way and really express them then there is no resistance that can block you from achieving what you want and I really um, yeah I really vibe with what you said that I probably haven't looked at my inner narcissist who wants to uh, you know make money and sell to people so that's what I'm gonna do after our call for sure because <laughs> well, I Karen, want to like get better we, at sales we, we we looked at my narcissist together like you know all the anger and stuff that I mean the amount that was in my system, I, I never, I never realized. So yeah, I, again, a lot of people don't want to feel these emotions, but it's, it's so powerful to be able to hold anger, hold rejection. Um, you know, you, you just, yeah, it's, it's so, so important. 
That's amazing. I'm glad that you say that because you are there as an example of inspired conscious entrepreneur. And I feel like so many people don't know that. So many people are still in this achiever mindset of like, oh, I'm not good enough. I have to do this. I have to do that. Or even I feel sometimes like, oh, I don't have enough wisdom and knowledge to uh, do a good sales call. But it's not true because if I just bring my authentic self and my joy and my excitement and my passion about the work that I do, and I'm really passionate about it, as you can probably feel, yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. know that because you work with me a lot, um, then people can just feel it. And people, totally. people are like, wow, okay, if you can change my life the way that you say it, and I know that I can, like I genuinely believe I can change anyone's life. If they come to me with a problem, I can help them. I, <laughs> you I know, wanna... whatever, if it's a physical issue or emotional issue, whatever it is, or a relationship or money mindset, I just know that I can help them. But uh, yeah, it's just a little bit of a maybe insecurity within me that is like, oh, Am I like, do I know enough? Because I've never yes. studied business. I've never, wanna, you know, studied sales. I really want to speak to that because a lot of coaches get caught up on this and this, this perspective may help. So as coaches, we love knowledge. We love, you know, knowing a lot and having a system that works and it's great, you know, and lots of people are amazing at the internal work and, and know a lot about, you know, their thing. And one thing that I pull up coaches on all the time is that, don't project your knowledge-based, system-based identity onto sales and marketing. Because the most important thing with sales and marketing is not knowing the most. It's actually not doing it from a place of talent. It's just getting something that gets the client the service they need. So they listen to you and buy the thing that's going to get them results. So I always say we go from talent-based marketing and sales over to something that is systemized and it serves the clients. And as soon as that happens, Kara, as soon as we're just like, I'm not relying on my skill, I'm not relying on my talent to do this, it's okay, I don't need to be the most knowledgeable on these topics, people listen. Someone actually once asked me, um, what is it that makes you a good salesperson, Jordan? And it's like, because I'm not concerned with being a good salesperson, I'm just here to serve the damn client. That's it, so... It's, um, it's a big, big, big thing that needs to change in our space. Get away from talent-based mm -hmm. marketing and sales and just focusing on something that serves the client. Mm -hmm. And that's so amazing and it lands in my heart so much because, uh, yeah, that's what I found that when I'm in the place where I, and it, it's in area, any area of life, really, when I'm in the place that I come from the service and where I let go of any attachment because what you just say, it's like, if you are attached to getting the result, if you're attached to getting this client, right, then you are kind of like trying to manipulate the universe that this is the way how I'm supposed to make money with this yeah. specific client and this is how it's supposed to go. And if you let go of it, then it can flow through you, that the words can flow through you, the, the situations, the people can be attracted to you because you're not that controlling, you're not coming from this oh, energy, like very, yeah, just c contracting really, because if you're like, okay, I let go, I don't need to get this client and I just, I'm just here to serve, you're becoming like Mother Teresa yeah, well, <laughs> and you're just like, okay, that's if, it. it's, if I can help them, I'm going to help them. If I cannot, well, maybe I can guide them to someone that can help them and, and everyone is happy, right? And it's, it's yeah, it, you're so right. And I, I had to learn this the hard way in my sales agency, because basically my my business before the one that I'm doing now, I used to get paid to sell for coaches. And I remember I had a couple salespeople working for me. And at that stage, I was, you know, I was the owner of the business, the highest performer, and everyone looked up to me. And I remember it took me five full-time salespeople to realize that, Jordan, this business is not about you. This business is about your clients. But I'd made it about me and five salespeople had quit and left because I was such a narcissistic boss that was insecure and was like, you all have to close like me and use the words that I use and use my energy. It's not true. Do what works. And what works is a system. And what works is bringing through your true self. And if I had understood that, Jordan, move your talent out of the way. I would have had a happier, healthier, and high-performing team. And, you know, after all the crying and all the screaming and all the shit, two years, <laughs> I finally understand it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's beautiful. I'm really glad to hear that. And uh, yeah, I'm even more uh, just really moved by your story and by everything you're saying, because I know that uh, I know you from the beginning of this journey and listening to you right now, being so fulfilled, so happy, so joyful and, you know, glad what, where you're at. I'm just, yeah, my heart really opens and I'm just so, so happy we can uh, talk now and Absolutely. compare of how you felt before and how you feel right now. And so, guys, uh, to everyone who listens, we are the biggest advocates for inner child trauma emotional release work. Guys, it can change your life, like really. It can really change your life and it can change your business as well and your relationships, everything really. Um, your your money-making ability because you're not coming from the place of fear and lack, right? You're coming yes. from abandoned mindset. It's like, I'm here to serve. I'm a part of the universe. I'm a part of God, the universe, whatever. Uh, whatever you believe in. I'm a part of higher power here to bring more awareness and more services and more help to people around me so if you come from this place it just becomes super amazing and so you're talking about um, being in your authentic self as you express yourself in sales but also having a structure so what is a, like a you know conscious structure <laughs> in yeah. sales that you can have like an example for example for example for um a coach or a healer, right? Because yeah. there is a lot of coaches and healers listening to us. Yes. To, to make it easy for, for these people like me who are like, oh, do I know enough about sales to be able to sell well? Um, to just put it simply, you know, because I don't, I don't believe it can... It, okay. the, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe it has to be like a complicated it thing. It, it could be very simple steps mm -hmm. that can just bring you the result because you are going to be in such a beautiful energy Then then your client is like, yep. Yeah. Sign me up. Okay, <laughs> I want to. I want to share three things because and and once 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 everyone listening, once you embody this, it's it's going to make sense. So there's either there's push and pull in sales, and now I'm not saying anything groundbreaking. Now I think a lot of people in the conscious psychology world understand that we can push and strive and chase for a client, or we can sit back and bring a client in. So there's three things. Be upfront. Number one. First and foremost, always be upfront with what you're going to do. Um, if you have a problem with not wanting to come across sleazy and sneaky, you got to be upfront. What is happening? It, you know, what, what are we doing on this call? Be upfront. That's step one. Step two, we need to get very, very good at allowing our clients to feel their own pain. People that stuff up sales calls will ask good questions, the client will say the problem, but particularly coaches, because we want to help, we rush in and we try and say, oh, it's okay, it's okay that, you know, this is happening, and we try and make it better. It's not what, it's not what needs to happen on a call. When a client has a problem, we need to hold a safe space so they can feel the pain. Because if they feel their own pain around a particular problem, they will buy off you but we usually get in the way and we try and help them out and f make them feel better on the call and that's where all the manipulation and all the crap starts. If we get good at just hanging out with tension and allowing them to be uncomfortable, the call does not get uncomfortable because my, my number one thing that I teach clients is tension creates ascension. If we're good at hanging out with tension, if we're hanging out at, with our own tension and other people's tension, it creates ascension. So we need to get out of the way and allow clients to feel their own pain. And then third, and again, I'm not saying anything groundbreaking here, we need to be great listeners. What's not being said? What are they saying? What might be behind those words? And it's easier than it seems. If we get good at that and by revealing to our client what their true goal is and what their true problem is, that's what creates real authority and that's where people buy. But most coaches, what they do is they try and teach on the call. They try and make people feel better and that's a push strategy. That's pushing. That's developing rapport. That's, that's being nice. It's better. Say less. Don't be enthusiastic. Hold the space for them to feel uncomfortable and just reveal to the client that you guys should be working together. Don't convince them, just reveal it to them. It's already there. Nothing else needs to be developed. So those are my three things. Be upfront, hang with tension, and be a great listener. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. And so a question, don't be enthusiastic. What did you mean by that? Okay, so enthusiasm kills sales. I am very sales. enthusiastic, by the way. You know, I'm yeah. super enthusiastic. I, I, know, I know, I know you are. <laughs> I love it too. I love it too. Okay, there, there's, a very, there's a very good reason. If I'm having a sales call with someone and I don't know whether I can help them and I don't know whether I can get a result, that's what I'm thinking, by the way. People that jump on sales calls going, I can get them a result and they don't know anything about them. It's too narcissistic. It's not true. You don't know if you can. You don't know if you vibe yet. So for me, I am not cold and I'm not over the top. I'm in the middle. I'm very neutral. Mm -hmm. And what that shows to the client is I'm in integrity. I'm being honest. I don't know if I can help you. So what that does to the client is they open up and they're like, well, I'm feeling like Jordan's open here and he's not assuming anything. I'm going to give you more. But what happens when we're in too enthusiastic on a call? Well... In my experience, it can start to push the client. They can start to change what they say. They can withdraw. They can feel a bit, oh, why are they so excited? I don't know if this is the right fit. I don't know if they can help me. They don't feel safe because we're trained in sales for so long. Be enthusiastic and they'll follow you. It's a push strategy. But if we're neutral and we're just holding a space, who ends up selling? They do. We ask good mm -hmm. questions. They see their reasons. They see their motives. They connect to that, and all we need to do is just show them. Look, I don't need to convince. You. I, I don't need to convince you. You're either feeling like you're a client or you're not. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and the and right I, people I understand sign up. The, uh, and I understand this uh, approach, but then the question is, for example, for enthusiastic, gen uh, genuinely enthusiastic people like me, like this is my authentic expression, right? I'm excited about life. I'm excited about the changes that we can make in people's minds. And I, you know, I have enough experience that maybe I wouldn't say I can always help everyone, but most of the people, I'm quite sure I can. And I'm super passionate about and excited about the work that I do. So for people like me who are enthusiastic naturally, how to balance it out with being authentic and being your true self, right, on the call mm. versus mm. trying to be neutral and not being too enthusiastic? Because, like, it, it's a balance between, like, being, like, you know, um, having, like, a strategy in a way of, okay, I'm going to be neutral to not push or pull or whatever uh, too much, right? But also mm. you need to have integrity within who you are genuinely in yourself. Yes. And I feel like my soul is super happy, super joyful, super intense, super yep. loving and, and enthusiastic. So how would you balance this out? I would time when that comes up. I would time when that comes up because remember the number one thing on the sales call, it's about the client, it's not about us. So for me, I get excited, but I'm very strategic about when I get excited. So the first, the, the majority of the call is about the client. So I'm not getting emotional. I'm letting that client do their emotions and what have you. But when I feel like something changes and it's clear that I can help them, I'll raise the energy and I'll start to bring me in. But the first thing I say to people is enthusiasm, aggression, whatever you want to express, it's got nothing to do with you. The sales call is about the client. Let them be emotional. Let them be there. It, just create a space where you are holding space for them. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then when you know, when you feel like it's obvious, when it's revealed to them that you can help, that's when you can start getting excited. Like I, I, I was on a call um, last week and I was telling one of my, um, my new clients, it, it became very obvious I could help him. And I was like, man, my organic lead generation system has been kicking butt. That's all I said. And he's like, dude, sounds so good. But the whole call, I'm very neutral. But it got so clear that that's what he needed. And when it got clear and it wasn't just, uh, I think he needs it, so I'll push it and see. <laughs> it was like, I'm going to get pumped about this because he needs that. I'm like, dude, man, if you saw the freaking results of it, you know, and then I get a bit playful and the call, the call goes well. So don't get excited and enthusiastic before you know, before the client, even more important, before the client knows that they're a client. You know, that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. So that, that, that's what I'd say. Don't, don't make the call about yourself early 
just let the client feel the emotions, let the client be enthusiastic, let them go through all that. And then when they know that you can help them and you know you can help them, then it's fine. I mean, it's a free for all. Um, so I, I always say emotions can get in the way early on of a sales call. Take it out, be patient, and then let it come through because it's about them, it's not about us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's really lands uh, because, yeah, it's about the, the client. And if you just keep it in mind, like you can also express your authentic self. And I can surely start the call with, with a smile on my face just because this is who I am. But in the totally. moment that I need to be there for a client and just really listen and hold space for them to express how they feel and, and what they need help with, then I can be in my pure presence and I don't need to, um, you know, bring any and uh, joy in this moment, but I can bring it before and after whenever it feels like the right thing to do. And, and let, let, let me say one more thing. It, imagine someone is going through pain and they need to feel it because you know if they don't feel it, they're not going to move on from it. All right? It's just going to avoid it. What can happen is if we get enthusiastic while that's happening, we can take them out of that pain and they forget about their problem and they get influenced by your enthusiasm. And then, you know, the end of the call happens and you go, well, do you want to sign up? And they go, well, you know, it's not, it's not that urgent. It's, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll think about it. But they've just told you they've, they've, they've gone through all this stuff for years and they haven't done anything. So this is where I say, mm -hmm. don't get in the way of your client's pain. Let them feel it. And, and the only way we can let someone feel something is by, hey, my emotions isn't coming into this space. We're going to let you go through this. We're going to let you connect with the fact that you got a problem and you need to do something about it. And you'll know mm -hmm. once they've felt that and they've committed. Once that happens, you can come in and bring your, what your soul wants to say, express. But until that happens, it's not wise to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I, I will certainly uh, sit with it and you know, let it sink within me uh, yeah. in this beautiful wi sales wisdom that you, uh, that you are bringing here. That's amazing. And so do, you ha so do you still use some kind of like old ways that you learned in sales in the, back in the days? Do you still use any of, for example, questions to ask or any like uh, light strategies, let's say, or is it yeah. just flowing through you right now? No, there's strategy. There's still, in fact, there is, the, the strategy is very similar. It's just delivered with a very different intention. The questions have changed a little bit. If anything, it's gotten shorter, right? Um, I'm able to influence faster because I'm more me. And um, I, I just think people need to understand when it comes to sales strategy, it's there not to guarantee a sale. I want everyone to understand this. A strategy is not there to guarantee a sale. A strategy is there to make sure that your energy is channeled and not all over the place mm -hmm. so it can serve the client. Now, whether it's a no or a yes, it doesn't matter. Just you are there following the strategy so your energy is focused on serving the client. So my, my script, my processes have changed a little bit. The main thing is the heart's open and it's, it's on the client, it's not on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I really vibe with that because really if you are, yeah, if you have some kind of like track that you're going and you really focus on the client, then sometimes you don't even sell, but you already helped the person. So totally. it doesn't actually matter if you sell or not. If you can bring this energy of like, I'm here to help this person. And I had clients like that. I had clients that jumped on a sales call with me, but they, for example, couldn't afford my services, but I gave them so much information about what they can do to change their lives that I felt really fulfilled after the sales call and anyway, yes. because I felt like, oh, I just helped this person. Although I didn't have a session with them, they didn't pay me any money. I can feel that they have some internal shifts that now they can go and change something about their life. And maybe at some point they're going to come to me because they're going to be like, okay, now I made all these That's... shifts and I'm more abundant, for example, and you helped yes. me. So now I want to work with you because you are the one that brought me this value. Right. Yes. So even though if it's not, if, if it's not closed, let's say, cause it's not the goal to be close, it's a goal to, to help, to serve and to really, yeah, be in tune with this person to know yes. where they are coming from and to know what they need at the moment. And so I totally vibe with what you just said. So I thank wanna, you so I much add, uh, for sharing. I want to add something there. Um, so it, what's really interesting is when these shifts happen, 
things that people think are sleazy, like cold DMs, cold emails, cold calls, follow up. You become so freaking influential because you're coming from your heart. You can turn all of those things into a very powerful system for your business and people will listen to you. Like people with me now, they just know Jordan's going to follow me up. I know he's coming back. He's not going to give up. But when people say, oh my God, Jordan, you're here again. They're loving it. They're loving that I'm following up. They're loving that I'm reaching out to them unannounced. So what, what I want you to understand is that we make, this is the big thing, we make the strategy. We put the label and the meaning of it's sleazy, it's pushy. If you just come with a different energy to it, 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 it doesn't, it, it, like it's not that. People love it. I always say people love getting cold calls from me. People love getting cold DMs from me. I cold DM people every day. They love it. I'm convinced, right? So if you can get to that place too, because your heart's open and, and, you're, and you're literally coming from a different place, then, you know, as you said, you help the client, you're out of the way. There is opportunity everywhere in this world to make sales because you're out of the way. If you're, if you're in the way, well, then you, 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 you think you need ads, you think you need this, you think you need that. Me, I'm just like, oh, we'll make some money today. All right, well, let get out of the way and let's let's get to work. What am I going to do? How can I serve people? It doesn't matter about the strategy. Mm -hmm. Just get out there. Put yourself in front of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And it's actually interesting because uh, yesterday or the day before, I had a call with my friend who is a clairvoyant. And I was just talking about some business stuff, asking him questions because he's he is a seer, so he sees, for example, what lights up more when I when I speak. Like this, should I do this in my business? Should I do YouTube, Instagram, these ads, these ads? And he, and I was saying to him, like, yes. Yeah, so you know, in order to sell like a big package of sessions, so like a three months coaching, probably people should already know me uh, to book such a big thing because that's what I learned before. Like, oh, people should know you. They should watch your content before they book like a higher price. Uh, thing right but he was like no they don't <laughs> he was like no they don't totally. need to know you you can, can just can I... have a one video and then and he said like yeah less than 10 minutes video will be enough for people to feel your energy and they don't need to previously watch your hundreds of youtube videos or your whatever else you have there to actually book if they vibe with you they, it could be instant right and for me it was like oh okay so this whole I... idea that i had in my mind and believe that people need to know me it's bullshit. Yes, <laughs> it is bullshit. It's a story we make up. I, I want to share something that, that I don't share often, but I will because I'm, I'm back in this space now. So a lot of people don't know that the way I built my sales agency was cold DMs. I, I never advertised. And um, I signed clients who didn't know me that ended up paying me half a million dollars, quarter of a million dollars a year through cold DMs. They didn't know me, but the magic there was I was very passionate about selling for coaches and they could hear it. And they also could see that I was very, very concerned with getting the right people into that system. And I look back and I tell that story and people go, are you freaking kidding me? Cold DMs. How did you do that? And I say, it's because, and, and it happened, it happened actually without me realizing what was happening because I was so scared of bringing on the wrong people, I really made sure, hey, can we, can we fucking help you? Because if, if I can't, I don't want that pressure, right? And on the mm -hmm. other end, when I got the client, I really wanted to make sure they got results because I knew this is going to be the fastest way I can grow, was that we, we ended up making big money with them. So when I say that story to people, I'm like, if you have integrity with who you want to work with and if you are like, genuine about getting a result, you can cold DM, you can knock on the door, you can scream from the mountaintop, you can do a Facebook ad, you can do whatever you like. You can get people to watch 100 videos. It's all going to work. It's all going to work with a structure um, because you're coming from the right place. This is, a, this is what I always bring it back to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the intention behind it is, is the soul, is the consciousness, is the service right not the fear as we were speaking uh, before and i really really resonate with it right now and that's why i feel like 
for me at my in my journey right now i'm rediscovering myself and how i want to promote myself and i feel like there are things that i don't want to do and for sure i'm not gonna get into like for example how to check the metrics of facebook ads or whatever because i'm just not this kind of person who would be fulfilled doing that so i'm thinking yeah maybe i should do, do more podcasts maybe i should do some public speaking because i love to speaking to people and just uh, having a nice conversation with them being very passionate about what i do and i feel like for everyone it's going to be something different because maybe some people prefer to write so then to write a facebook ad is going to be perfect for them or to write a, yeah. a vsl or something right but for me um it might not be that and i feel like everyone should discover what lights up their soul because if they are going to do something with resistance or like oh this is going to work because I learned on this and this course that, okay, YouTube ads work the best, but they are not going to actually feel it. Then it's not going to bring the results well, they want is, anyway. So this is this talent based marketing and sales thing. Every coach out there saying you need to do YouTube ads and nothing else works. It's because they, they're coming from this place of ego, ego, ego. YouTube ads works for me and because I'm talented and because it lights up my soul. Everyone else should do it. It's complete bullshit. Everything works. Mm -hmm. What do you connect to? And what you connect to, you will get out of the way of as well. So if you love writing, you'll get, you'll get out of the way and you'll write about your client. You won't write about yourself. See, I, I, don't, I write songs. I like writing songs. But if I write copy, I, I, I don't like writing copy. So I make it about myself all the time. Sales calls, <laughs> processes, and, and it's a very sales-based strategy. I love it. So quite often you'll see I'm, I'm listening to what people want. I'm listening to people's fears and problems and I, I make it about them instantly. So it's, yeah, what you love, you will get out of the way of and you will be able to serve with. So just don't, don't buy another course and, you know, go, ah, oh, shit, this is the only thing I can do. Like you buy the thing, you buy the course, you learn the thing that you feel like you would actually get out of the way of and make about your clients. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, it really helps me even because I'm at this point in my life that I need this kind of calls and this kind of information. And I am sure that our listeners benefit from it all as well. And so uh, I'm curious about your um, business right now, because I, I know that you're not only doing the sales mentoring, you're also a, a hip hop artist. So you're also like navigating, you know, the, the business life and the artist life. And uh, also, I know because of your personality, right? Uh, and yes. achiever wing artist. So you need the artistic part to be expressed yes. in the world. And I yeah. also know that you are in Healy business. Um, I yes. would love to touch upon this one as well, because I know that there is a lot of people using Healy right now. And I just wanted to ask, like, how did Healy help you? And what it even is, because I don't think I spoke about it uh, with anyone, but I also have the device and I'm also in the business, um, let's say. But I would love you to talk a little bit about this and how it helped you or maybe some of the examples of how it helped other people around you. Well, the thing is, you know, everything has a frequency in our body. Where You know, our, our kidneys, our skin, our, our hair, our, our, the, our relationships with ro romantic relationships, our relationship to money, business, it all has a frequency, right? And quite often these parts of us call out for this specific frequency like food or water or, or nourishment, right? It's looking for this to bring us to who we really are. And when we don't have these particular frequencies and energies, we act out of trauma. We act out of our lower vibe self, right? So I have found since using Healy and following the readings and the scans, that I am able to stay in my heart longer. I am able to focus on other people a lot more. I'm able to come from love. My creativity has gone up. And just less bullshit, less stories affecting how I do things in my life. Um, particularly Healy has played a massive role in me kind of transcending and, and redefining my romantic relationships and how I do relationships now, which has been really powerful. Um, but I know for other people, it's unlocked abundance codes. It's it's helped them heal livers and kidneys. Other people have been able to have kids because of Healy. Like everything has a frequency. So it's a, it's a truly amazing device. Mm. Yeah, and I want to add to it. So it's a little device. If, if there are some people who listen who have never heard of it, it's a tiny, tiny device that you can literally like uh, pin to your 
to your shirt or whatever, and you just put these straps on your hands that are emitting the frequency that you choose on your uh, app in your phone. So you can choose different organs, for example, or you can choose different programs like um, for sleep or for relaxation or even for studying and focus. <clears throat> you have a lot of stuff, or you can even program it with the frequencies that you need. Um, you just need a person who has a device called Time Waver and they can scan you and then they can input on your device, on your Healy, exactly the frequencies of, of uh, your needs. So for example, I had some coli bacteria or whatever yeah. um, and some other viruses and I just went to a Time Waver practitioner who, who just input these specific uh, viruses and bacteria. And then if the frequency wave of Healy hits the frequency wave of this virus or bacteria, it kind of like cancels each other out. If you imagine two waves with the same like amplitude coming on each other, they can yes. cancel each other out, right? So this is how Healy works. It actually like Mm, it can change your energy. It can change your way of being because it's just bringing the frequencies in your body that your body will resonate with and it can open up your chakras because there are chakra programs as well. Uh, it can do a lot of cool stuff. So if any of you is interested, you can contact me uh, or Jordan after the call and after our uh, podcast. And so Jordan, tell us where people can find you because uh, I would love yes. them to know. Uh, the best way, go to my Instagram, uh, literally my name, Jordan Dubano, without the apostrophe, because Instagram doesn't allow Italian last name tradition. So uh, just Jordan Dubano. Follow me there. Send me a <laughs> message on what you resonated with on this podcast. I'd love to hear it. And I look, I've got a free sales telegram channel where I drop um, inspiration. I have some free resources coming out very soon on conscious lead generation, sales processes, the whole lot. Um, so yeah, just go there and uh, you'll find you'll find it all. Conscious lead generation. That sounds so amazing. Yeah. I, I'm super looking forward to it and I want to be a part of this telegram as well. I feel like I can I can learn from you uh, right now. You know, I helped you on the very first steps on your spiritual journey. Now you can help me on the very first steps of my sales and uh, business journey. Maybe not Absolutely. the first, but uh, yeah, some of, some of the steps on the way. Amazing. And so is there anything, any final thought about um, spiritual business, let's call it, that you'd like to, people to know, like in terms of approach or perspective, or maybe something that do you feel like it's the most important perspective that you got after years of healing and years yes. of, uh, oh, apart from what you just mentioned with, with the intention of fear uh, versus love, right? And yes. with the intention of focusing on the client, is there anything else that you feel like is super important to add on this topic for people to really be in alignment with their soul in the business to, for them yes. not to have to push too much and, and tense too much. So yeah. Is there any more wisdom bombs you want to drop on us? <laughs> two, two. It's, some people won't like this, but that's okay. It needs to start off that way sometimes. Um, first off, strategy in business is only there to channel your energy to serve the client. So please, like if you have this thing, I don't want strategy, I, I don't like it, it feels icky, I get it, but I want you to reframe it that it's not there to just be about you and to, to make money and to manipulate people. That's, that's when it's off. It is there to channel who you really are so you can help the client. So that's number one. Number two, make it about the client. Uh, I, I, I want to continue to say this businesses truly spit the most spiritual thing you can do in business is make your business about the client, make your business about a system that can help your client. And when it comes to you, get out of the way, get out of the way. The more you get out of the way of the strategy, the more that you get out of the way of, of what wants to come through and you put strategies in place that can help the client. You will be amazed at what you can accomplish in this world. People come through. Caro, we used to speak about this in my healing sessions. Uh, healing sessions. I'd be like, what am I so passionate about? I don't know what my purpose is. I'd go on, 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 on. The minute I got out of the way, ideas come in, systems come in, how I can serve the world come in. And, and it's, it's because I started focusing on Who's showing up in my life? What are people asking me to do? What are people? What do people want? How do they want me to serve? And the minute I got focused on that, it, it, it really touched me deeply in my heart. And I stopped procrastinating after I shut down my business and I just got focused on serving. And now I am very passionate about what I do. You know, I help coaches 
get the most out of their lead generation and grow businesses that can help their clients and serve their programs on a larger on larger scale. But it only happened when I stopped focusing on me. And I was like, you know what? The more I just do my healing work and get out of the way, the more money I make, the more people I help. And when I see that end result, people getting results and I'm you know, getting paid for it, it's beautiful. So you need to stop asking yourself and obsessing, what's my purpose and, and my passion? It, it's right there in front of you. People are showing you every day what your purpose and passion is. Just show up and get out of the way and serve people. That's, that's the best thing I can say for a spiritual business. Mm, that's really, really beautiful. And I feel like um, this is a beautiful sentence to finish with. So le let's let it land for people who listen. Um, and thank you so much for being on this podcast today because I feel like I needed to hear all of that. And I'm sure that everyone who listens uh, really benefited from it as well. So thank you so much, uh, Jordan, it was and a pleasure to talk to you. And no, thank you for having me, Cara. I love what you do. Always have, always will. And yeah, I appreciate you having me here as a guest. It means a lot. <laughs> beautiful. Namaste, brother. Namaste. Thank you so much, beautiful souls, for being with us on the podcast today. The conversation with Jordan was really, really cool. I hope that you really got out, a lot out of it as well, just like me. And if you would like to find me as well, you can find me on Instagram. I'm the Connection Catalyst, or you can go to www.connectionhidencatalyst.com and see what I have to offer there. Because um, I really believe that together we can change the world one step at a time, one trauma <laughs> at a time as well. So if you need some help um, when it comes to the trauma, emotional release, healing work, shadow work, uh, please contact me and I'm um, super glad to see if I can help you. So yeah, thanks so much again uh, for listening to us and uh, sending me so, so, so much love.